We are back again in the darkest parts of the human psyche. In watching this video, you'll become witness to serial killers who were captured on CCTV. Right, so one white foot, attempted murder, and murder. This is CCTV footage of serial killer Joanna Dennehy and her accomplices buying petrol to destroy evidence. Dennehy, Gary Stretch and Leslie Layton are seen pulling up at a shell garage near Peterborough to fill up a petrol can. Earlier in the day, Stretch had been driving around the streets looking for someone who could be stabbed by Joanna simply to feed her bloodlust. On April 2nd, 2013, serial killer Joanna Dennehy and Gary Stretch were pictured walking hand in hand during the height of a national manhunt for Joanna. They are seen walking casually through the Strentham service station of the M5 motorway. Roughly 20 minutes after stabbing her final victim, she is arrested. Here, she can be seen flirting with the officers. Amazing. Looks good. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, Matt, you're so good. Real technique. Uh, shit. Sure. 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 This person is not anxious, concerned or remorseful. She is very calm and even enjoying the situation. David Fuller secretly abused the dead bodies of women and girls in hospital mortuaries for more than a decade, totally undetected. Fuller generally worked the night shift from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. He was often alone in the mortuary after staff left from their day shifts and would disappear into areas not covered by CCTV cameras. The predator's shocking crimes were only discovered after he was arrested for the 1987 bedsit murders of Wendy Nell and Caroline Pierce. In December 2021, following a DNA breakthrough, hard drives that were attached to the back of a chest of drawers in Fuller's office were discovered during a search of his home. Investigators have so far detected around a hundred potential victims, of which they know the names of 78. Fuller said in a police interview that he did not know how many times it happened. Something which later on in court, anything you do say may be given in evidence. You are being arrested to secure and preserve evidence by the means of questioning, so we can conduct searches, so forensic samples can be obtained and to prevent your disappearance. Do you understand? This is David Fuller admitting to the crimes during police interrogation. At this point, he is finding it difficult to verbalise his crimes. Can you try and explain it to me? Mm. Right. You find it hard? Yes. Thank you. Right. Um, do you need help? No. no. Okay. Um, um, how we, we know that I want to admit that I am admitting the offences, but I don't really want to go into detail. Yeah. Um, okay. I do appreciate that. And what offences are you admitting, David? As you've just described to me. Okay. In terms of the sexual penetration of yes. corpses. Okay. And do, you, do you know how many occasions, David? No. No. The second part to this, David, is the recording, isn't it? Of, of what's been happening. Okay? And we'll have to go through that in a little bit more detail, but just for now, David. Alright? Just for now. Alright? When, 
when that's been happening. Okay. Alright. Have, have you been recording yourself doing those things? Recording yourself sexually penetrating the corpses. I admit that access. Yeah. Okay. Were there any occasions other than at those hospitals? Okay, so it's always just been hospital setting. Yeah. It's not been at any funeral parlours or no. anybody that you knew that had died or anything like that. Okay. Do you know why you started? No. I don't know, David, whether certain things in your life have given you the opportunity to do it. Can you see where I'm coming from? So it could be a particular shift. Or it could be a particular day when the mortuary closes early. Um, it could be something else in your personal life that allows you to to do that or or there may not be a, a sequence it might just be when one of the females enters the mortuary and what was your what was your thought process about your offending david how would you how do you um, decide that a particular Offence would occur. I mean, you know, is it? I didn't have a particular. If you're enjoying this video, please drop it a like, and if you're new, hit subscribe and help me on the road to 100k. You can also check out my other videos where I speak to the most infamous inmates directly. It would help me a lot. Thank you. This is Neil Maxwell, being arrested for the attempted murder of Lee Cooper. Watch your back, Rods. Yeah, Rods. in your pockets, mate. Neil Maxwell. Maxwell, sorry. I jumped in there. In this next clip, I'm going to show you Neil Maxwell in police custody. He can be heard justifying his crimes, even saying he is proud of what he did. But he has not been honest about what really happened. I was told, I was told that this was going to be all right, but he got a, he got a good idea yeah, and he deserved it, and I'm proud I did it. Everything that you do is all proud of it. He got a good idea yeah, for pinching my brother's motorbike, but what I did, when the guy hit the floor, I left him. He tried to crack me with a monkey wrench, I walked away. I did what I needed to do. I whacked him, bust his face, when he got on the front down, I got him back up. I said, don't ever pinch my brother's bike again. No. And that's what I did. Is that fair enough? Attempted murder. It's a bloody chicken scratch. He's got the head in cut his foot. Stand on my This morning you arrested on suspicion of uh, attempt murder, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, you're now being further arrested on suspicion of murder. You do not have to say anything. Imagine it's under caution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do not have to say anything. Where behind the defense, do not mention one question. It's something which you later rely on court. And you do say we've given evidence, all right? Do you understand the caution, yeah? Just so you know, further authorised detention on that arrest. Well, okay. Okay. So, we yeah, you, so we can interview you about the allegation. We can interview you before the day. So what's happened to some guy's dad? Right, okay. Thank you very much. What really happened to Lee Cooper was far more sinister. He had been brutally kicked, stamped on, stripped naked, slashed and tortured before being bludgeoned to death. In court, Maxwell showed no remorse for his crimes. Even when the judge handed him a life sentence, his response was, That's absolutely sound. That will do me. Don't forget, if you want to write to inmates like I do, then use the service I use. It's called Jmail. It's fast and it's secure, and it means you don't have to use your home address. I'll leave a link to their services in the description below. Tamara Samsonova, known in the Russian press as the Granny Ripper, 
is believed to have already killed at least a dozen people before she moved in with elderly Valentina Ulanova to act as her carer. But the pair quarrelled over dirty cups that had been left in the sink. Samsonova drugged the 79 year old, putting crushed up prescription pills into a salad before dismembering the woman whilst she was still alive. A senior investigator in the case told reporters Tamara Samsonova admits that at first she made her friends sleep and then cut her into pieces. Samsonova wrapped the body parts in a shower curtain and then dumped them near a pond close to where she lived. The grisly bundle lay there for several days before a passerby decided to investigate. The police were alerted and a house to house search led them to Samsonova's door. Officers found more body parts in black plastic bin bags and traces of blood all over the apartment. Samsonova admitted the murder. Samsonova, who was 68 at the time of her arrest, also kept a detailed diary which listed several other murders. One entry read, I killed my tenant Volodia, cut him into pieces in the bathroom with a knife, put the pieces of his body in plastic bags and threw them away into different parts of the Frozensky district. After her arrest, Samsonova said, I knew you would come. It's such a disgrace for me. Everyone in the city will know. This footage is from 2017 of the notorious granny killer in Russia, suspected of killing 32 elderly ladies in their homes. This is footage of the suspect released by authorities whilst he was acting as a peeping Tom, most likely scouting new victims. He evaded police from 2011 until 2020 when he was finally captured. His name is Radik Tagirov, who investigators say lives in the Russian city of Kazan, has two children, including a baby. He gained access to the homes of his victims by posing as a social services worker or a residential maintenance official before using objects such as dressing gown cords and electrical cables to strangle them. He told his interrogator, I choked them with my hands from the back. I held on until the victim fell asleep. Asked why he used his methods of killing, he said it was quiet, fast, and I don't know, painless. Finally, when asked how many women he had killed, he said, I didn't count. I only found out from the news. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.